Okay guys, so welcome back for episode 5. Uh, I did try to film this episode earlier, but I realized that this is really a two-part episode. So, what we're going to do is we're going to make a power system that can support our new workshop. Our old workshop's running off this dinky little generator that only put, outputs 10 EU per tick and sucks up coal like nobody's business. So we're going to upgrade to new machines with a new power storage source, new cabling, and all new power. But before we do that, we have to make it. So this right here is an alloy furnace. It's made out of brick instead of stone. It is part of the red power mod. I need to destroy some of my stuff. This is all spoilers, guys. So we're going to make an infinite water power source, which uses water mills and red power machines to feed filled water buckets into water mills to generate power. And this is good for smaller, medium scale operations. Uh, it is a little bit laggy on servers, so you may wish to check with your admins if you're playing online before you do this. Um, they might have a limit on how many water mills you can put into it things like that. Uh, your alternative, if you still want near infinite power, is to skip directly to geothermal or solar power. Uh, solar power is really expensive, which is why we're not doing it quite yet. In the long run, it's the best. Geothermal requires lava pools. This seed I am using does have a lot of lava pools underneath it, so it is a viable option. But we're just going to go with water mills because they work everywhere. And they're a good introduction to red power sorting systems. So first we're going to look at how to make this alloy furnace. So alloy furnace, uh, if you're in a swamp biome this is good because you do need brick which come from brick which come from clay. And this recipe right here should indicate to you that oh I probably make it by cooking it and we see that you do smelt clay to make a single brick. You fuse the four bricks together to make a normal brick. You can also make a flower pot. Uh, that's part of farming stuff. And then you make the alloy furnace. So make the furnace, bam, bam, put it down, look at it. It works just like a regular furnace. It's um, it's more of a combination between a crafting table and a furnace. So you have your power source over here. We're going to put coal in. Uh, you can make a powered one, this one here, the blue electric alloy furnace. It's really cool. It's a lot faster. I do highly recommend upgrading to it and because of how I orient my workshops I will end up having blue electric power nearby ready to power this should I choose to upgrade it. So that is something to keep in mind. Uh, so we make this furnace and the first thing we need is we want to make the red power machines. So what we need are pneumatic t tubes, this, which is brass and glass. So brass is just a fusion of copper and tin inside the alloy furnace. So this is shapeless crafting. As long as you have any tin and any copper in there in any amount, it will subtract one tin and three copper and make brass until it's done. So quick demonstration, copper. That's not how this works. I need one, two, three, and a tin. And so I'm going to end up cooking a lot of things in front of you, but I'm only going to do them one at a time. So this is copper tin. We also need the machines. So we need a deployer. I'm showing this one first because it has nothing special in it. So you need some redstone, a piston which needs some redstone, and a chest. So this, really straightforward. And what this machine does is you put items inside it and it right clicks the block in front of them as if it was using those items. So if it right clicks dirt and there's seed in it, it'll plant the seed, or tilt dirt rather. If you put a bucket in there and it right clicks water, it'll pick up the water. Same thing with lava. So straightforward, simple, nothing complicated there. Uh, the next thing we need is a called a retriever. And this actually leads to both items we need. So this is a retriever. Uh, it needs brass and ender pearl and blue alloy ingot. We'll get to the blue alloy ingot in a moment. And a filter. So we need two filter because we need the filter to make the retriever and we need a filter on its own. So three cobblestone, two gold, uh, piston. 
pistons are the basis of red power machines. Two cobblestone again, so five total, and a red doped wafer. So red doped wafer is silicon wafer and redstone. Silicon wafer is diamond handsaw and silicon bull. So silicon bull. And you get 16 per one. Silicon bull is eight coal, eight sand. Notice again how we end up at the iron alloy furnace. So alloy furnace is broken right there. It was done for a while. I don't know what happened. So we're going to go through that. So the deployer is simple enough that I'm going to just take one without showing you how to make it. Uh, filter uh, will go over how to make the red doped wafer. So I need sand. I'm going to take a whole stack of sand. If you don't have sand near you or available or you don't know how to get it, you can't make it with the minium stone, but you can make it by putting cobblestone in a macerator. Okay, so I have some power in this bat box, so I'm just going to quick show you cobblestone into macerator. And by quick, I mean we're going to wait like 10 seconds for this to go. And this is why we're upgrading to the new machines. So in the next episode, we'll make the rotary macerator, which can do this operation like twice a second, maybe once a second. But it's at least 10 times faster. So bam, it can make a sand. So I don't care about that. Uh, we're going to use charcoal to make our bulls. Uh, you do not want to use your regular coal. I cannot keep stressing that enough. So we put that in there. Doesn't matter where they are. I can spread this out however I want. It'll still make the silicon bull. So we're going to make eight of these suckers. And I'm not going to wait for it. So I like to have a whole bunch of silicon bulls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight silicon bulls. Uh, diamond handsaw. You do need diamond. Uh, again, really straightforward crafting recipe. Uh, bam, three stick, two iron, two diamond. If you have not found any diamond, try digging deeper. You'll find it between like 12 and 20 most of the time in terms of your coordinates so if I look at my map over here this bottom coordinate that 63 is my height look between 12 and 20 if you're gonna dig and you really need things go to 12 and dig there 11 is where lava starts so if you're digging on 12 you won't f accidentally fall into lava unless you dig down so we will have an episode on that in the near future that'll be episode 7 I guess so there's that. So silicon bool, we make the handsaw, uh, bam. Uh, uh, there is one other way to make diamond. You can use the minium stone to fuse gold. So if you have four gold, no big deal. Just toss it in there. And you'll need eight gold total to make two diamond. So we get the handsaw, and we cut the silicon, bam. So now we have 46, wow, that's not right, 128 silicon wafers. Uh, we need two silicon wafers to make our machines, or red wafers, red doped wafers. So I need redstone, one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight. So bam, bam, that's all there is to it. Uh, I'm not going to wait for this, so red dope wafer. So there's one going to destroy it. Bam. Now I also need these blue doped wafers and I need these blue doped wafers because our filter, not our filter, our retriever, this guy, is powered by blue electric power. So we need a blue electric power source and we're going to use solar panels because they're easy to make and I don't know how to make power otherwise. But mostly because they're easy and no maintenance. So we need a whole lot of blue doped wafers. So we made the 128, we can get 15 solar panels out of that. So that means we need this blue alloy ingot. I hope you've been keeping your nickelite and silver because it's four nickelite and one silver. So we need a whole lot of that unfortunately because we also need the cable to transmit the power. So we need the blue electric, blue alloy wire, which is three of these. We need at least 
Let's go with 36. So we need 9 of these for that, plus the 15 for solar panels gives us a total of 24. So I'm going to assume, uh, what the heck, why not? So again, we open this thing, we get our silver. Uh, it doesn't matter if you use silver from the factorization or not. I'm going to use the factorization one anyways. Nikolite, one, two, three, four. And we just throw this up there, and it'll cook. So we get our blue alloy wire at the end of the day. Uh, we're also going to make red, al red alloy wire. So same thing, only red alloy wire is made from redstone and either iron or copper. And don't worry about those. So again, one, two, three, four. I'm going to use an iron ingot. Uh, when you make it, I would use whatever you have more of. So if you have lots of copper, go with the copper. Uh, I might use copper anyways just because I run out of iron really quickly. But when we start making solar panels, we will start to use a lot of iron. So it or a lot of copper too. So it's kind of a moot point. So we need some red alloy cable, not quite as much as I made right there. But now what we're going to do is we're going to make the machines more or less. So before we go on at all, I need those iron ingot back. And I'm going to show you what to do when you don't have ender pearls. So we go to the retriever, and for whatever sick, twisted reason, this thing requires two ender pearl. So if you don't have ender pearl, because either you've been running from every enderman you see, or just haven't been lucky, there are two ways you can do it. You can either stand outside in the dark with this particular weapon, the athame, and when you see an enderman, just go up and stab him twice, he'll die. Uh, that's a easy but inefficient way of doing it. The other way is you can make one. So you just take your minium stone and you put four iron in this shape. So it says shapeless, but it's lying. So we open it. We put this here, up here, I guess. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And we get our two ender pearls. So now that you have your ender pearls, uh, you can easily make the retriever. So you do need a leather, you do need brass, you do need the nickelite we just made, or the blue alloy ingot. Uh, filter, nothing complicated, does require the wafer. So we'll assume you can make those nice and easy. Retriever, filter, retriever, filter, deployer. Uh, I will need some water, so I'm just going to get a water bucket for the future. Uh, so we'll assume we converted these into the blue doped wafers by just mixing them with Nikolite in the machine. So one, two, bam. And now we're just going to make the solar panels. So as you know, solar panels only work during the day, which means we need somewhere to store our blue electric power during the night so that we don't run out in the middle of the night. So what I need is something called a battery box. This is as opposed to the bat box we made earlier. It's BT battery, blue alloy, iron, wood. Straightforward. Nikolite, two copper, two tin. So you make four of those. One, two, three, four. Uh, I guess that was dumb. You make them in this pattern, you get the battery box. Bam, battery box. Uh, last but not least, we need a couple more things. We need the timer. That's a pain. But first, we're just going to make the red alloy wire. So red alloy wire is a new redstone wire. Um, redstone wire can only transmit a uh, redstone signal like 16 blocks, I think, before it needs to be reset. So you need to have a... Um, uh, there, there are tricks to it. Red alloy wire can go 128, so it's eight times more efficient. Maybe it's 16. Maybe redstone only goes eight, but it's it's far more efficient and it's cool because redstone you can only lay on the ground. Red alloy wire can go up walls, 
and it can do weird things like this. So, and Anthony is over there with his magnet mode on, stealing all my stuff. But that's okay. We only need like five. So, red alloy wire uh, works very similar to redstone. Again, uh, it if you try to transmit power through a block only on insulated red alloy wire like this can pick it up, insulated red alloy wire can't. Uh, we will potentially have an episode going more into the mechanics of this in details. So, moving on. We need the timer. The timer sends a redstone pulse at regular intervals. This is an enormous pain to make. So, first you need stone wafer. And you get stone wafer by making stone and smelting it. So stone comes from cobblestone, you smelt cobblestone, and you smelt the stone into wafer. You need a whole lot of wafers. You need six, seven, plus another six is thirteen. So you need thirteen stone wafers, you need redstone, so you need three of these guys. Uh, one, two, three, yep. You need this stone pointer, which is stone, redstone, stone wafer. You need a stone cathode anodes. So finally, you you only need to make one of these. So I lied, you only need ten weavers. So you do all of that, you make this silly timer, get it in your inventory, we're good with that. Now there are just a few more things we need and we'll be good to go. So we need those pneumatic tubes I showed you earlier, so hopefully you made a whole lot of brass, because we need it. So. We're going to assume you made like a whole stack of brass and you walked away with like 30 some pneumatic tube. I'm just not going to show that. So we also need the water mill. So in episode 3 we made the generator over here. You take the generator, you surround it with various wood, you get two water mill. So we're going to get myself some water mill. Now we've got the water mill, the pneumatic tube, check, 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 and power transmittance. So in the old episode we used copper cable and I just kind of gave that to you, take it for granted. Now copper cable loses one EU per tick every six block it travels. So traveling from here to here is only five block, four blocks, one, two, three, four, five, five blocks. So you don't lose any power in this setup. If you went out farther you would start to lose power and it become very inefficient. Now where we're going to build this power system is downstairs and we're going to feed it up through the bottom. So there would be a lot of power lost if we use copper, cap copper cable. So unfortunately I I am unnecessarily fond of fiberglass cable, glass fiber cable, which uses diamond. Um, I personally don't have problem with diamond. I find lots of it when I play. And it's just because of how I mine, which we'll go over in episode 7 you come across a lot of diamond that way. So, glass fiber cable, yep, spelled fiber the American way. There we go, European spelling. UK if you will, Britain. So, glass fiber cable you can make with redstone. Inefficient, you only get four, or you can make it with silver. If you have the silver, definitely do it, you want to save redstone anyways. And we're gonna make glass fiber cable. So we need a whole lot of this unfortunately, so you'll have to make probably f it depends on how far you are you'll need at least 25 or so to cover the water mill setup so now we're going to go into my basement where I'm going to set up the machine so first of all we need a 3x3 three three spot to put all this stuff so and the reason we need 3x3 three three is because of water so if you have a 2x2 two two square, it's possible you'll run out of water because the way the system works is it's going to pull water from this space and then pull again. If you have a 2x2 two two square, let's say that looks like this, then it is possible it might pull this water and then this water and then your system's over. It can't regenerate. So that's why we do that. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to add our power system. 
So our power system runs on sunlight, which means we need to find sunlight. It's a real pain, but oh, I want to go down. I also need torches. Do I have torches with me? I do. So light, light. Where am I? I'm just gonna dig up now. And bam, here we are. So uh, I'm gonna move it over one just because I can. Nah, I'm not gonna worry. So bam, bam. Now we have our cable. We're gonna. I'm gonna put the solar panel out first. So I'm gonna feed my cable up along this wall and out here. So one. Four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 14, 15. That's how many you should have. So we'll destroy that now. Uh, I did not give myself the blue electric cable. Oh, I never went over the blue alloy cable. So, <sighs> apologize. Three blue alloy ingot like we made before, and wool. Any color wool. So. This is kind of like making the copper cable, only instead of copper and rubber, you've got alloy and wool. And you do need a lot of wool for it. If you don't have the wool, you can try and make it out of silk from a flax, perhaps, or spiders. Otherwise, you're just going to have to hunt down sheep, because you do need this. This is not a voluntary item. So... We're also going to briefly go over uh, micro blocks because if I leave this as is, monsters can fall down here and then we all have unpleasant times. So I've got my dirt and I've got with me a handsaw. So I won't go too much into micro blocks, but what I did right there was I put my blurt down, dirt down and I cut it in half. So I have a dirt slab. And this is kind of like the vanilla slab in that it's a half a block but you can place it anywhere on a surface so in oh shit I apologize for my language I also apologize for not being in creative mode again so if we look here there's this grid pattern on the ground so if I put it on the center square it lies flat if I put it there it stands up on that edge stands up on that edge stands up on this edge stands up on this edge so now what I'm going to do is, if I wanted to, I could put this here and that would be fine. But I'm fancier than that, so we're going to cut this in half again, and we're going to make a three-quarter block, which is also called a triple slab, or triple panel. Uh, where'd my handsaw go? Bam. Uh, notice that it does matter which direction I put it, so if I put it like this, I cut it in half. Uh, I don't know what to call that orientation. If I cut it here, I cut it along the other plane. So I want this one. Uh, this is called a panel. Again, I can cut it further into a cover, which I will actually do for my stone here. But I want just the dirt triple panel. So now I put the dirt triple panel on, and bam. Much nicer. Now, unfortunately, this will never grow grass on it, which is really sad, but better than nothing. So. As you can see, my cable goes through there uninterrupted, and when we go downstairs to check, it will have power. Now, I will make the stone thing I just talked about. So, one half, one quarter, one eighth. I uh, do notice that you get eight of these, so if you really want to build your house out of some material you don't have a lot of, you can just make it out of covers. Uh, building with them is tedious, annoying, and a nightmare in terms of lighting because they don't light like other items. So now we come back in here and we're just going to finish laying out this wire so we don't have to worry about monsters now falling down to the ceiling. And I'm going to put uh, creative mode. Bam. Bam, bam. I'm going to put the bat box here, and then I'm going to feed it down into here. So, now what goes where? Crap. This actually has to go back a little more. So, bat box here. And 
then power. There we go. Okay, so what we need now is a screwdriver. I did talk about the Omni wrench. It's a little buggy, so it doesn't always work. I'm just going to use the screwdriver to avoid any complication. Uh, they're also really easy to make. And now I'm going to put my machines down. So first I put down the deployer. So this is the end that does business. So I want that facing the water since what I'm going to do is I'm going to put empty water buckets in here. It's going to right click them and it's going to turn them into filled water buckets. I'm also going to put next to it a pneumatic pipe. So notice the water does not flow past the pipe. That's great. However, I don't want to see this pipe because it's ugly. So I'm going to put covers on it. BAM! And pneumatic pipes are the only ones you can do this with. You can't do it with the build craft pipes. Uh, now I need a retriever. So what the retriever does is it surveys everything it's attached to and yanks out particular items from it. So we're going to tell this to check all of our water mills when they exist. If they have an empty bucket in it, to pull it out and bring it back to the deployer. Then this, which is also facing the wrong direction now, is our retriever, or filter rather, and our filter is going to... Da, da, da. We're going to tell it to pull out water buckets. So we put water bucket in here. It's going to check this. If there are water buckets in it, it's going to pull them out and it's going to send them out to our piping system. So last but not least, we need a thing to regulate this. Uh, that'll work. So it does matter what direction this goes in. So now we hold shift, we put it on top of these, and notice that when it ticks this thing opens briefly. So what we're going to do is, when we're ready, I'm going to put a whole bunch of buckets in there. Also, you can right click this to change the time, I'm going to change it to one second for now. And now we're going to set up our system. So bam, 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 bam. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, the nice thing about this system is it scales great. It's not hard to make. Uh, did you just? Oh. Okay. Can't have it going into the side of the filter like that. So I'm going to get rid of this extra one. But I, as I was saying, the nice thing about this system is it's really easy to scale up. You just add down more tube, more wire, more water mill. So now I've got my water mill. I'm actually... Oh, can't have that there. So let's see. I'll put the water mill down first anyways. So hold shift. Get it all down. And last but not least, we need the glass fiber cable. So this is the expensive part. I might get a whole bunch of comments regarding this because you might not necessarily want to waste your glass fiber cable, but we're generating such minute amounts of power that I don't want to risk losing it. Your alternative is you can set these up so that you can use tin cable. Tin can transmute, I want to say, 5 EU per tick before it burns out. So you group these into sets of five, hook them up with tin, lead them all over to some common bat box, and that'll work just as well. Fly. Uh, it just It's a little more resource intensive, but it does save you diamonds, and it accomplishes the same thing. So again, I'm going to be inefficient here because I want to be able to walk in my water if I have to. And I'm just going to lead this up to the bat box. And there we have it. Uh, only issue is we need more buckets. So, bucket, singular. So that's how you make a bucket. I'm just going to give myself 32 of them, and bam. So now it'll start sucking out buckets like nobody's business. So buckets come out, empty buckets come back, they go into here, and they go into this thing. Notice that I keep jumping in the water to check this out because I can't right click it through the redstone, red alloy. And this is filling up with water buckets, which is bad, which means I need to go faster. So I'm just going to quick spaz it, and then maybe put it down to 0.9. 
So it won't normally fill up like that. That only happened because all of the machines were already f empty. And break that. And this purring noise means it's working. We go over, we look at our bat box, and bam, we get power in. So this is free power. Uh, it never runs out. Only issue is each of these only puts out like one EU per tick of power. So in terms of EU per material, not very efficient. In terms of maintenance, it's wonderful. So this is what we're going to use to power our basic, or I guess our intermediate workshop. So thank you for joining me today. I apologize for this being a longer episode, but this was a lot of material to cover. And it's good to know. This build craft or red power pipe system is incredibly powerful, incredibly efficient, and very smart. So we will be using it more as we go forward. And I am curious why it seems to only be loading the one. Okay, I did forget to put something in the retriever, so the retriever is derping mega hard. Uh, so I'm the retriever will either retrieve everything attached to it or you can tell it what to retrieve so if I put an empty bucket in here it will stop pulling out my filled water buckets which is exactly what I want because there are so many buckets in here Oop. and when you want to put buckets in the system just add them to the deployer All right, so that covers, gosh darn it. That almost covers today. So now we need to put a, fil a bucket in the filter so that it works properly and doesn't pump out empty buckets. Now we're good. Now everything will work properly. So we should see a lot more power come out now. And as you'll notice, blue buckets come out the filter, empty buckets go in the retriever. And now we're not sending them all to this first guy, which I thought was very suspicious. And if we look at our bat box, uh, well, take my word that it would be pumping out a lot more power right now, if it could. And if you notice when you're using this that you start to see your buckets pop out of the deployer, that means the system's not going fast enough, it's filling up with empty water buckets or full water buckets and not using them. And then once it gets full, when it adds a new water bucket, since water buckets don't stack, it has no space, it throws it out. So, there we go. Thank you for coming. Our next episode will focus on upgrading the machine shop now that we have the power to accommodate it. So, enjoy.